Welcome to Here. Preview, fuckers. There was a note found that the Austrian police has not released. No. And he did use the same not that yeah. he used, so it's like... So, to any potential serial killers out there, mix it up. Don't do this. Yeah. yeah. Not that we're giving you advice. No, no we're this, giving you advice. This is speculation oh and... God, it's like my anthropology class all over again. <laughs> my anthropology class in college, she got up there. It was a great class, first of all. Second of all, she was a really cool teacher, and I really wish I remembered her name. And now it's just me by myself talking to myself like I'm Dr. Ian Malcolm. Life uh, finds a way. That's one big pile of shit. <laughs> Jody Arias. Ooh, you just want to talk about her butthole. I, I'm not a butthole fan, but you know, some of her pictures are. No. <laughs> Sage's comment still wins it because I brought up that conversation during the Dolly and Depolito episode. Where I'm like, hey, who's hotter? He goes, Jody Aries. I see I've seen her yeah. butthole. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you can tell from a butthole, but okay. I haven't butthole. seen her butthole. It's on Google. Uh, I know, and I'm not willing to go down that rabbit hole just yet. Bad term for a butthole, the rabbit hole. Uh, you're welcome. All I can think about is the Dollar Shave Club commercial. Oh my god. Any of them. Uh... When the bear wipes his butt with the bunny and it starts running. Oh my god, that's right. <laughs> it was a white bunny. And when he was done, it was a brown bunny. Uh... Okay. Hey fuckers, how's it going? All right, shall we get shall we get into the yeah. episode? Yes, thank you for waiting for me and my birth pipes. Oh gosh, seriously, Dude, that's, that's what happened. It's it's bad. Like oh, I God. That yes. is a good transition because yes. shit is about to rain in North yes. America when yes, Jack Unterweger <laughs> comes to North America. Yep, well, I'm not Literal covered in shit, shit right now. <laughs> a caveat. Now, the segue was there. I had to do it. It's good. It's a good one. Since eventually we're going to toast to our Patreons, should we all discuss what we're drinking tonight? In my mama coffee mug, I actually am drinking apple pie moonshine that my mm. husband and his dad made last night. That sounds good. It's delicious. When you come over Wednesday, you can have some. Oh, yes. Yes. Because we have giant bottles. <laughs> That'll work. Send I will some. Send I will some. Send oh, some. We have a ahead. gallon and a half of moonshine, or of moonshine. What do you have, dude? I'm drinking the lovely, lovely in my TTFN Tigger mug. <laughs> Black Phillip from Spring Hill Jack Coffee. Mm, that one's my favorite. If that you have not gotten favorite. on to Spring Hill Jack Coffee, first off, you're behind the eight ball. Second off, if you want to get on Spring Hill Jack Coffee, fantastic company. Great prices. Damn good coffee. And uh, the sealer is the handwritten note you get with every order. So to oh. our friends at Spring Hill Jack, thank you very much. We love you. And I'm just drinking a smoothie because I'm fasting, so I'm not as exciting as you guys. Well, the smoothies do look really good because they're good. Yeah, yeah, I have a morning smoothie every day. Me too. So, I should but... get on the smoothie train, but that requires more planning on my part. Oh, oh exactly. Oh, before I did any of this, I had my my few last beers, and once again, I and a couple Trulies because Trulies lemonade is fantastic. If anybody wants to try to take my man card for that, bring it on. Don't knock it if you've not tried it. But yeah, you're talking. I made sure like my lunch is made, my breakfast is ready because we were recording tonight. We were being mature. My lunch yeah. is made for tomorrow because I'm just gonna bring leftovers from tonight, so that's made. Oh, there you, there we go. I have no there. idea what I'm doing for breakfast. No clue. Coffee. That's yep, the beauty that'll of be guessing. part of it. It's just coffee. That's all. Yeah. 
And once again, speaking of coffee and shit raining down from everywhere, <laughs> let's get into God. Jack Cooper Baker. Where we last left off, Jack Jack got hired by an Austrian magazine in Los Angeles. And this is after he got out of prison and eight bodies have been found in a year. Dude went on a berserker mode. Jack goes to L.A. in 1990, and while in L.A., he is writing an article for this magazine about crime and punishment and prostitution in America. So he once again is getting tapped in to his victim pool, and he was there for five weeks. There were three victims that we can tie him to. There was a fourth with a similar M.O. in San Diego, but no charges were ever processed. The three victims were Shannon Exley, found on June 20th. Happy birthday, Sarah. Thanks. (laughs) Irene Rodriguez on June 30th, and Peggy Booth on July 10th. All three victims were horribly beaten, strangled with their own bra, and fucked with tree branches, so clearly this guy was a fan of the original Evil Dead. Dude hit the ground running. Do we know when he arrived in L.A.? Like, what date? I can look it up, but it was in the summer of that year. It was in the summer of that year. So he... So in theory, he didn't hide the bodies very well because they all seem to have been found fairly quickly then. Right. I could not find exact dates of murder i Mm. only find dates of bodies found okay so here's this guy from austria we have similar mo's as in austria and czechoslovakia because this is before the fall of the soviet union and to me the most screwed up thing jack did is through this entire time he was going on ride-alongs with the lapd asking them about the murders under the guise of being an international writer. So it's so much like Ed Kemper. Yep. I mean, not that Ed Kemper went international, but he was friends with all the cops. Yes. And he kept prying them for information about what they knew, what they found. And at this time, this is when said super cop that we talked about in the last episode, Mm -hmm. a guy by the name of Dr. Ernest Gagne. Is it Ernst or Ernest? I'm calling him Ernest. Ernest. We can go Ernst. I'm thinking Ernest goes to trial here. But Ernst well, Gagne, with him being Austrian, I'm, I would assume it's Ernst. Well, if, right? if, if blood-sucking zombies end up listening to this, because I gave them the shout-out, I emailed them about the last episode, thanking them for their song and turning me on to this case, please correct me. Any Austrian mm-hmm. listeners or German listeners, please correct me. Dr. Gagne was never convinced that Unterweger was a reformed man. And this was somebody who was on his original case. Mm -hmm. He always knew that this guy was a monster. He kept a discreet surveillance on Jack. So the whole time after Jack got out of jail, this guy was just following him. Uh, Dr. Dr. Gagne Gagne. was? Yeah. Yeah. Just kept watching Jack the whole time because he never bought the act once. How did he get that cleared by his department? He did it off the books. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So this guy knew right off the bat that this guy was full of shit. So full of shit, his eyes were brown. I don't know if he had brown eyes, but yeah, okay. You have all that going down, and Dr. Gagne at this time started to realize that the victim pool In Austria, both in Vienna and a town called Gantz, the murders just stopped when Jack was out of town. And he started talking to the police about, hey, look at this. Look, look, this guy's out of town. He's on vacation. He's doing what he needs to. Do you see any bodies? Look over here. (laughs) We have our killer. And at this time, while Jack was in L.A., the Austrian police started to realize that Dr. Gagne might have a point. This brings in another killer that I did not put into our notes, but the super cop in the Robert Picton case, and even the the one cop in the, oh God, what was that shitty Nicolas Cage movie? Frozen Ground. Robert Hansen. The cop oh. in the Robert Hansen case, 
who knew something was going on, they could link it to them, but no one would listen. So to anybody out there who's in law enforcement, if you got a weird guy saying that this in your department who's saying we might have a serial killer, look at what I found. Maybe we should listen to them. It is always the one tie in every case that unravels everything. And this is the reason why we split this into two series is not only can we introduce this guy, but at the time when Jack was in L.A. doing what he had, you know, doing what he was doing, being a monster, being the tree from Evil Dead, the Austrian police decided, yeah, uh, maybe we should look into this guy. Maybe we should investigate. They began to trace all of his activities from his credit card receipts to his car rentals. And after a few months, they got a bunch of links to his movements that put him in the location of his victims. And the record showed that Unterweger was in Gantz when Brunhilde Brunhilde Masser yes, was found strangled. And also when Brigance disappeared off the radar. So the net's closing in around this guy. This is what we see in a lot of killers where their berserker mode, as it's called, is the one thing that is really their unraveling. Yeah, true. They get careless. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they started linking all the MOs, the Czechoslovakia to Austria to LA. Here are these prostitutes who have been beaten and strangled with a, an elaborate slip knot in their own bra. And they started linking it back to Jack. So finally, through all the fame and all the press, because he was a minor celebrity at this point, right? they started realizing maybe this guy is the monster that we originally thought he was. Nets closing down on Jack. A witness also came forward and testified that Unterweger was similar to a man that she had seen before she disappeared and that she was wearing a brown leather jacket and a red scarf. Wait, and so he, was, of, he was seen with her before? Yes. Oh my God. Okay, and that was Sighting. before he went to LA? Yes. Okay. This yeah. is during that berserker mode, right when he got out of prison. And sightings mm-hmm. of Unterweger with the other victims in Vienna were also established. So he did nothing to try to cover up his crimes. He was just being blatant. And that really has to go with the narcissistic behavior of psychopaths. Yeah, right. He thought he was untouchable. He Because he's too legend. smart. Yeah. yeah. He believed, yeah. he fed into his own bullshit. That's hey, how they always like children's books. I'm innocent. God. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just like any good cult leader. You start to believe your own bullshit and then you yeah. get caught. Then you get caught. It's flavor aid. LRH, man. Yep, yep. Unfortunately, we never brought that asshole to justice. LRH or Jim Jones? No, LRH. Uh, Little column A, little column B. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sprinkled with a nice little bit of David Koresh over it. Oh, God. He literally went down in a place of glory. Yeah. He lit his own fire. <laughs> he lit his own fire. And once again, the animals have interrupted the podcast. Yes, again, on my end. Fuck me. I'm waiting for me to jump up on your shoulders, dude. <laughs> me too. Oh, she's sitting with Ben. He's playing video games and she's fell asleep under the blankie. Why does no one else have like ADHD assholes for animals? Oh. If I was on the couch, you you would try to be crawling into my mouth. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Wait. I hear ya. Following Unterweger's return to Austria, he realized he was now a suspect. And he started writing articles criticizing the police police effort to track down the killer. So he was literally... (laughs) He was doing the Ted Bundy thing. Look at all this evidence against me. Not me. Not me. You're, no, you're just blaming me because I, I murdered one person a long time ago in the That's same way. The same victim profile. Look at these knots I can tie. It's clearly not me. It's clearly <laughs> not me. I can't tie that knot. As he's tying the knots while he's doing the article. Right. Like he's practicing his knot tying the whole time. God, when Boy Scouts go bad, shit. Oh, right. God. You know, coming from the Navy, when bosun mates finally don't get their advancement. Dr. Ernest Gagne, uh, Gagne collected... Geiger. It's Geiger. Geiger. 
Geiger. Okay. Geiger. Like a Thank Geiger you. counter. And he's counting the victims right now. Yep. Um, so he collected as much circumstantial evidence as he could from which various Austrian prostitutes who Unterweger had visited in a pretext also brought up. So now you have the battalion of prostitutes going against Unterweger. A battalion? A battalion. Is that the group term for a battalion? Is, is a battalion of sex workers? Yes. It's like a murder of crows or... Yes. Or, yes, or, or a gaggle of geese. Yeah, gaggle of geese. Yeah. There's a school of zombies. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it's a school of zombies. Now we have this doctor who's been tracking this case for 20 years and the battalion of pissed off prostitutes. <laughs> I like it. That's a fun little visual in my brain right now. <laughs> yeah. Like I see very short skirts, very tall boots, and like a <laughs> bat with like nails in it. There's one with a torch, but the torch is just a burning dildo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's led by the scariest dominatrix you've ever seen. <laughs> but you'd totally be into it. Somehow yeah, she makes Tim Frank Curry as Dr. Frankenfurter look hot. <laughs> what? No, no, no. I'm saying she's super hot. Like, oh, she's she hot. the hottest dominatrix you've ever seen. You'd totally be into it, and she is leading the force. I feel personally attacked on this, and I like it. <laughs> uh, See? Told you. Yep. Dr. Geiger was able to carry out forensic tests on a BMW that Unterweger had bought after he was released from prison. I thought and he had a, a hair... Yeah, this guy hit, hit the ground running. He had... Oh, okay. Yeah. So he had, he had multiple Mustang, cars. Multiple cars. Got and it. a hair fragment was found that DNA tests proved that it belonged to Blanca Valkova, the first victim over in Czechoslovakia. This evidence allowed a warrant search of Unterweger's flat in Vienna, where they discovered a brown leather jacket and a red scarf. Oh, just like that lady had. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just like Hammerer had. Right, right. They also came across a menu and receipts from a Malibu seafood restaurant together with home snapshots of Unterweger posing <sighs> with female members of the Los Angeles Police Department. God, I would love to see that picture. It's I just think it's ridiculous. I picture Let's see Will, if I can Google I it. I picture the Will Smith meme. And it's just like, look at all these people I'm duping right now. It's the joke only he's in on, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's the funniest joke in the world to him, because only he gets it. Mm -hmm. Once again, textbook sociopath. Oh, yeah. so fun. Geiger, on a hunch, thought that something also might turn up in L.A. So he contacted the police and discovered that there were theories of investigations on the prostitute killings. Geiger discovered that all murders in L.A. were identical to the Austrian murders, and they had been killed while Unterweger was in the city masquerading as a journalist and required the L.A. cops to assist him with his research. More Is it... Is it really masquerading as a journalist if he technically was really writing? Right, true, yeah. Do you really think he went over there just to write, or it was one of those... No, like, it was two birds, one stone, man. Asking, uh, right, know, exactly. I picture it as Gordy stealing your stuffed animals, growling at you, and then running away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, but like I said, he still was, I mean... Yeah, you can I'm masquerade as anything. No, I, I don't think it, I, masquerading I feel like he was never going to actually publish people. it. He was he was getting it published. Yeah, and Aaron was, Hernandez was making millions of dollars, but still shooting people in gang shootouts. Right, but he wasn't masquerading as a football player. He actually yeah, he was a football stuck. player. So he, I, think yeah, he was. I think he was masquerading. But he as a actually player. was a football player because he actually got paid to do it. It's not like no, I, I'm with Sarah. masquerading I as uh, a superhero because I run around in a fucking cape. Yeah, you can't do that in my neighborhood or you'll, you're going to get shot. But Probably see, that yeah. would be masquerading. <laughs> I hear masquerading and I think of him in one of those masks from old masquerade balls walking right. around with a pen and paper. <laughs> right, but he's still actually getting published. He got published and I didn't. So he oh, was a better writer where the than me. Is coming from. So we clearly, understand now. <laughs> so clearly, this means you didn't kill enough hookers. <laughs> clearly. Uh, wrong life choices, being a Sarah. published writer. Apparently. A famous published writer is killing hookers. Let's start investigating Stephen King. 
I mean, honestly, if we had a TARDIS and we could go back to the 80s, there's nothing we couldn't find on Stephen King. Right? Look at these pots. Under or behind the pile of cocaine, right? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Exactly. He actually has a Pennywise costume and he he actually takes the life out of them. And Mm -hmm. this is the moment where he gets sued for liability. We love you, Stephen King. We love you. We're kidding. We're, We're kidding. just playing. I, actually, he'd probably laugh at all of this. He probably would. He'd probably, he would probably be show. sitting there going, ah, yeah, I do. I'm like, oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, yeah, that's uh, actually true. Uh, the, my first victim was named Georgie. I tried to confess. <laughs> it became a movie. Tim Curry starred in it. <laughs> and then they remade it. Yeah, and then they God remade damn it. damn it. And, and I had a part in the second one. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, he can't act. He oh. Stan lead that shit. He did. He did. And all he had to do is sit there and look scary. So, you mm-hmm. know. He looks yeah, like I mean, an old guy. He looks like every 70s rock star yes. ever who survived. He, right. Yes, who like mysteriously survived and they're even surprised yeah. at this point. There, oh, there are... Speaking of old rock stars that look surprisingly well, I saw a picture of Ringo Starr from 2019. He looks fucking amazing. Are you I want to know what drugs he did and I'd like the he same concoction. Amazing. He's 80. He's Keith 80 Richards. and he looks 50. Maybe. No, look maybe. up Ringo Starr, dude, because Keith Richards doesn't look no, like that. No, Ringo Starr looks way Ringo Starr looks Richards. maybe 40. Well, look amazing. Look yeah, Roger maybe 40. Daltrey. I agree. Look at Roger Daltrey from uh, yeah, Daltrey. I back in college when oh. he did all the Tommy. And 100%. he had more energy than most coked up rock stars. Or, or Paul Rogers from Bad Company looks fucking amazing. Mm. Like, oh Bad my company, God. Bad Company from Bad Company? Speaking yeah. Of yes. Paul, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Paul's, like Paul Rudd just doesn't age. No. Yes. Not at all. At all. Never. At all. I'd also Never. like to know what he's taking because I'd like some of that too. He's looked yes. the same since Halloween 6. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My my mom saw fucking Clueless and then she saw the Avengers Endgame part two and she was like, this yeah. guy never aged. Never aged. His hair changed a looks little bit. Like, exactly. Looks the exact fucking same. Right. For his age, his hair just went more and more spiky. Yeah. Right. But that's kind and of it the style Why? too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's Why how you work. That's how you can judge Paul Rudd's <gasps> age is how tall his hair is. Yes. It just keeps getting longer oh and longer. And pretty soon he's going to look like one of those great old 70s punks at like mm-hmm. 75 where he's got like a three foot mohawk. Mm-hmm. We support you, Paul Rudd. Right. And well, all your fashion choices. Right. And so, if you're listening to this, you should be on our show sometime to bullshit mm-hmm. with us. Oh, God. That would we be, love you. That would be great. Great. And um, fangirl like all over. Me too. It'd be a problem. Me too. It'd be a problem. <laughs> It would be such a problem. Let's be real. If we got any, like, for real celebrity on here, we'd probably be fangirling, like, 100%. all over. Well, it could I would be, a be minor doing the show, like, from my hoodie, like that. Like, I, I can't so... look at you. I can't believe you're actually yeah. talking to me. You're all curled up, like, oh, yes. shit, talking like, oh my God. It would probably get, we'd probably have to talk to them for at least an hour before we could get anything worth recording. Oh. I would be a lot of inebriation just yeah. to not like freak out. I'd like, oh probably god. get worse if I wasn't inebriated. <laughs> I'd probably just sit there and be like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> We'd all have the Charles Ng squinty eye face. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Geiger discovered that all the murders in LA were identical to those in Austria and they had been killed. Once again, he was masquerading in the city as a journalist and requiring the L.A. Police Department to assist him in the research. More importantly, <laughs> res- receipts from Unterweger's apartment also linked him where the prostitutes were murdered. And it turned out that Unterweger, while he was in L.A. and while he was in the Czech Republic, never stayed in classy hotels. He stayed in the roach coach, you know, pay by the hour kind of places. Did he stay at the, at the Cecil? Those are sealed. I can't look up. Well, but the Cecil right. Hotel in LA is the place every serial killer fucking stayed when they went through LA. Ramirez stayed there. There was this huge rash of suicides between like 1930 and 1950. It's been, right. yeah. it's been rebranded so many times. Murder Hotel from American Horror Story is based off this fucking place. Yeah, it, it's I that Chelsea that Hotel, hotel out in New York where... It's that Sid whole Vicious killed Lampy. Nancy, and, yep. yeah. and Dee Dee Ramone actually died. And if there's a book that I own that's 
one of the most fucked up books I've ever read because it was all written when Dee Dee Ramone was strung out on heroin 13 months before his death called Chelsea Horror Hotel, where he's hallucinating killing transvestite hookers, his dogs talking to him, and the ghost of Sid Vicious tells him to keep injecting heroin. At this point, that last part sounds comparatively sane. Right. <laughs> like, yes. The thing we've talked about today, the ghost of Sid Vicious telling Dee Dee Ramone to shoot up more heroin yeah. is the thing that, thing we've talked that, about today. Reasonable. Slightly I mean, normal. Yeah. Comparatively. Comparatively like, to the rest of the things he was writing about. Like your dog trying to tell you to kill people, like Son of Sam or something. Right, I was yeah. just going to say, who is he, Son of right Sam? Singing. Right. I mean, what, maybe. What happens when you decide to leave the Ramones to make a rap career and you rap around oh about mashed God. potatoes? That is mm. the worst song ever. Bad life choice. Oh, oh God. If you want to laugh, Ramone ta- look it up. I have Dee Dee Ramone tattooed on my leg. Yeah. I. I and then I, you I, heard the rap song? Yes. <laughs> and question your life choices. Regret. Uh, that was, that was a post-divorce, I'm going to do this because I want to. I should have gotten Detective Popcorn. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I love Detective Popcorn so much. Um, so, friends started tipping off the police, and they were now searching for Unterweger after he left Austria to enter uh, America. And then he started a campaign, um, once again, to make him look like a victim. So when the cops started really investigating and searching, this is when Unterweger and his 18-year-old girlfriend decided, fuck Austria, we're leaving. Yep. Peace out, yo, we're gone. Peace and out, Girl Scout. Yeah, be- <laughs> didn't she just get dragged along? Like, he, he, like one day was like, well, we're out. And she was like, okay. So this, yeah. Th- yeah, I feel death, bad for her. And, and in Poet of Death, they actually interview her about this. And she was just yeah, like... I've seen it. And they, she was sitting there talking about, like, he was starting to confess these things. Like, I have a problem. Oof. Now, when most of the time someone confesses they have a problem, it's, I have a problem. I drink too much. Mm-hmm. I gamble on the pumps. I'm I have five hands of teams. Right. Um, not, I have killed 11 hookers after getting released <laughs> from jail for killing a hooker. That Maybe is a hell there. of a thing to confess to your 18-year-old girlfriend. Yeah. Not the Spice Girls is my favorite album. It's I Kill Hookers. Yeah. Okay. I have a yep. small love for Aretha Franklin, and I dress in ladies' lingerie. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Killing... That's not a problem. Like, if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. That's a thing Tracy to Tracy Chapman is my favorite singer, and I kill hookers. Yeah, <laughs> see... <laughs> I slowly have built up this collection of Hummels. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Hummel figurine collector. You know, that really like, you know what? I don't think that would be something that he would have to confess considering he's Austrian. Like, that's like sure. a normal thing for that's Austrian, right? A normal thing. Yeah, because they, right. yeah, they get issued in the mail every month right. you get a new sure. Hummel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a thing. Like, yeah. you sign up for it. You don't even sign up for it. They just start sending it to you. Oh, congratulations, you're an Austrian citizen now. Here's your first right. six Hummel here's, an, here's another Hummel. Yeah. There's six years of Hummel collection you can go right. ahead and start with. Right. It's like all those people like I do, and you know, I can't I can't critique these people who can collect Funko Pops. <laughs> right. I mean I have very similar. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have a nice little concert set up with Joey Ramone, Freddie Mercury, John Deacon, and Mark Hoppus. Yes. So the ones that we have, so we've got uh, two of the Doctor Who's. You we've do. got um, Wayne from Wayne's World. Aww. And then we have a mini Jack Skellington. Oh, so and cute. And Lily walks around the house with them as dolls. And she has had a runny nose because she's teething. And she takes the snot rags that she doesn't use anymore. And she covers them like she's tucking them into bed. <laughs> Oh god! Oh, so they're just like <laughs> on like the shelves or on the table. Tucked into Kleenexes. I, I thought it was like how Gordy used to bury bones in the carpet, <laughs> and we did that. Similar. Carpet. And you'd step on <laughs> it and be like, "Fuck." Similar. Similar. <laughs> adorable. It's so cute because we get the we get the boogie wipes because they're like wet with saline, and then 
you can wipe the nose and the saline helps cleans it out without having to like shoot it up her nose. So then when it dries, cause we'll leave it out and then we can use it again. But then when it dries, it's just a little tissue and there's, it's not crusty or anything. And she just that's kind of cool. covers it up. And I'm like, that's adorable. Now I have that's to throw adorable. this away. <laughs> Yeah, so that's as, cute. It's a recent development. Recent as Unterweger has left Austria, he flew to none other than Canada first. And on the request of his 18-year-old girlfriend, she really liked Miami Vice. <laughs> okay. No. And okay, she thought no. Miami would be a great place to hide no, out. Oh, honey, no. No. You know... Let's say that that was her super good idea to get him caught. Ah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 She she knew everything that was going on. So let's go to one of the most public cities in the world. Right. 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 And then, oh gosh, you got caught. Oh Burn the no. Lock, what I am no I idea. going to do? My boyfriend, who happens to have killed eleven women, got caught. Uh-huh, it's not yeah. my fault. And now I'm here in beautiful Miami, all right. by my lonesome. Thank you know what? None of my bras and bikinis have these weird <laughs> knots in them again. Right. Thank God I just don't wear bras. So okay. at the time, Unterweger is running from Interpol because Interpol decided, oh, now we're going to pick up the yeah. case. In theory, you have to go through certain... Right. Uh, there's certain policy sure. procedures that you have to yeah. go through before that sort of thing can happen, especially with an international organization. So, oh, sure. Yeah. Of course. So, at this I mean, time, Jack was also writing Austrian papers and calling into Austrian TV shows, playing the victim that oh. this was all some big conspiracy against him, that he was just a victim, that I didn't do any of this. All while everybody back in Austria started to realize, hey, you know all this evidence that we have? <laughs> it's so all out. of these piles and piles and piles of evidence. <laughs> hmm. That might it be is, it is literally the dog fire meme. Where yeah. all of Austria is being like, this is fine. But instead of fires, like I said the last time, it's just piles and piles of dead hookers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I thought about that SpongeBob episode where SpongeBob w- had the baby with Patrick. And Patrick was yes. the one that was going to work. And then there was all the dirty diapers. And he opens up the closet and a bunch of dirty diapers oh. fall out. <laughs> and he, like, takes the wall down and there's more dirty diapers. And he points outside and there's a big giant <laughs> of dirty diapers the size of this house. That's <laughs> piles and piles of evidence exactly. to get hookers yeah. in Jack Unterweger's yeah. case. Yes. And she just like opens the closet and like a pile of dead hookers fall out. And it's like oh. it's like a bad eighties movie where they open the kids' closet and instead of clothes, it's just dead hookers and knotted bras. <laughs> it's just a bunch of knotted bras. Yeah. And then, and then the girlfriend right. looks at him like, um, Jack. Yeah, what's hey. happening here, honey? Oh, you have too many hookers. Can you get drop some off at Goodwill? Honey, <laughs> darling, anymore. light of my life. Um... <laughs> <laughs> or it's that couple from that first season of Archer where she wants to have a baby. <laughs> and he's like, we need to talk. <laughs> and he's like the little old gray man. She she wants to settle down, have a family. He just wants to keep killing hookers. That's a very awkward argument to have on a daily basis. Right. So tale as old as time, really. Yeah. So she said, We've all been, this, been there. To my been there. <laughs> We've all been there. Oddly enough, which I think is the funniest thing about all this, on February 14th, Valentine's Day, the warrant in Austria has finally been issued for the arrest of Jank Unterweger. Because he has killed, he's been linked to seven murders in three different Austrian cities. Wow. Of what year was this? 1991. Okay. So this is just before his... This is right after yeah. his berserker. He's he's living it up in Miami, living as Jack Smith. Stop it. Really? <laughs> no, no, I'm just making that up. Oh, okay. I was going like to say, that. was that seriously his alias? That's <laughs> Hi, I'm Jack Smith. I'm a normal American <laughs> like you. With the thickest what dead German hurt, accent you've ever yeah. heard. Yeah. Can you it's point me to the Red Lake? Tell me what's all. 
Can you point me to the red light district? Further bar. I mean, thank you. Thank you. He starts his own underwear line and starts selling t-shirts from a cart on the side of the road. Tommy like, Russell from the room? Yeah, exactly. From from the room. The yeah. bird man. Oh, yeah. there it is. Tommy Wasau is the Zodiac killer. Never mind. Oh, um, oh I could see that, actually. Uh, Sorry. That's kind of frightening right now. I'm, like, yeah. looking over at my door, like, is everything secure? Because that guy is going to walk in with a water bottle saying, I did not hit her. It's not true. That's it's true. <laughs> <laughs> How's your sex life? <laughs> You're my favorite customer. <laughs> Hi, doggy. Hi, doggy. <laughs> Dude, it's great. I bought the DVD, and in the DVD is a headshot of him. And on the back yeah. of the headshot is an order form for his underwear line. Oh, God. He Did sells it everywhere. Some? No, oh. but I almost framed the picture. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised you didn't buy any. What, I mean, I'd like Tommy to see Russell it. Tommy lining my crotch? No. No. No, no. for the story. For the That's story. Yeah, right. I do do a lot and of then things. you could frame the underwear next to the picture. Mm-hmm. Didn't you know it's perfect unisex underwear? That would be a waste of underwear, Sarah. I need more money. <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> Patreon subscribers, buy me underwear. Yes, buy me <laughs> the underwear. It, it'll be a great conversation piece. Make it so, happen. Yes. Yes, Jeff it'll be great. Jeff Bigger gets arrested in 1991, and it takes him two years to get extradited back to Austria. Okay. That kind of doesn't surprise me, to be honest, especially if they linked him to the um, uh, it, to the yeah. prostitutes in L.A. Am I mistaken, or is Austria a country where no matter where you commit a crime throughout the world, you can be tried for it in yes. your home country? Okay. Yes. Oh. The big reason that it took two years is there was fighting between the LAPD and the Austrian PD of yeah. who gets to try Jack Unterweger. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Shit, and, send him back home. He'll get tried for everything. Well, right. You got to think at this time in LA is also during the Rodney King riots. True. Then why did LA want to deal with that? Right. With this guy? They have other it's shit to worry about. Look over there. Yeah. Hey, what? a red herring. Yeah. Look. Straw man. An obvious distraction. <laughs> yes, we're beating this black guy while we're having yes. this obvious distraction, but we look caught over this here. But look, we got yes. this white guy. Exactly. Got, hey. We're you not guys racist. Remember how you hated Nazis? He, st- <laughs> he speaks German. <laughs> <laughs> we caught a Nazi, guys. Look over On here. The Fifty-year anniversary <laughs> of World War II. We got <laughs> ourselves a German. <laughs> We're gonna get you guys some Nazi stuff. <laughs> Bunch of LAPD officers looking like Brad Pitt's fleet from Inglorious. <laughs> <laughs> All coming out with baseball bats and Samuel L. Jackson's narrating behind them. Yeah. That's why I need to narrate my life. Oh, God, yeah. Like, for real. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, Morgan Freeman. I'm like, no, I use motherfuckers. Samuel L. Jackson. Dude, yeah. I have yep. a fence for a guy who came from Nigeria who had the greatest, beautiful, deep voice ever. Mm. And I look at Sage and I'm like, that man, that man needs to narrate my life no matter yes. what I do. That's I, I, I still go with Samuel L. Jackson because I use the term motherfucker yeah. a lot. Right, right. But if it's you're going to have someone narrate your life, do you want to ruin all your motherfucker moments? No. Because it sounds oh. better coming out of his mouth. Yeah. No, but can you imagine that pause right there? Samuel L. Jackson sitting there talking. I can't do a Samuel L. Jackson voice. No, you can't. No, I, I'm yeah, please don't. Wait for this. <laughs> but it would be great because every time I say motherfucker, his voice would come out of my mouth because he'd be narrating. Yes. Or if it's a movie of my life, every time like it's a shot of me, he's doing the voiceover. And every time I mouth motherfucker, he's <laughs> like badly it. dubbed. Like, yes. Dude, motherfucker. All I picture you yes. is yelling at somebody at work. And then all of a sudden, I'm throw the voice and, you mother mother and Samuel yeah. L. Jackson's voice comes out of it. Yeah, everyone's yeah. gonna think they're on a permanent acid trip. I mean, great. Out. Do you know how much I want that to happen now? Like, I'm <laughs> that serious. I want Patrick Washburn to narrate my life, the guy who played Crunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
can he be doing Kronk? Yes, yes. He carries your life? Uh, I, I'm going to dump this term right now because we talked about it over, you know. First, I'll turn him into a flea, and then I'll put that flea in a box, and then I'll put that box into another box, and then I'll smash <laughs> it with a hammer. I'm like, yes, I'm I on board. I quoted that line, and that was the other time she looked at me, and she's like, yep, I picked the right guy. <laughs> Aw, you guys are disgusting. Fun. Yeah. Jack gets extradited back to Austria and for his trial. And during this time, he's telling his girlfriend, his lawyers, and everybody that if he goes back to jail, and here's a little bit of foreshadowing for everybody out there, he's going to kill himself if he has to go get life in jail again. His first defense was good. Was it just the, like, I didn't do it? Yeah, it wasn't, you know, hey, this is a reality TV show where ninjas came out and murdered Travis. I was eating too many Twinkies. <laughs> oh, God, the Twinkie defense. <laughs> oh, that's another one we could do. Oh, God, that would be great. Which one is that? The, the killing of Harvey Milk? Yeah, where the yeah. guy literally said he only killed him because he had a sugar imbalance because he ate too many mm. Twinkies. Oh, I the am Twinkie defense. didn't the Twinkie know defense. anything about that. It, I'm and it wasn't adding just it to milk. our list. It was the whole like office and like other legislators and like. And he was the first like openly gay politician. Mm-hmm. You right, know? I knew that. Yeah, he got shot and killed by a guy, and then the guy's defense was, "I ate too many Twinkies." Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that was the defense. Oh yes, yes, we can put that up with Dahlia's as yeah. double defenses of all time. Yeah, for real. Uh, that might take the first, I, oh, reality TV show. That's pretty bad, too. Um, so Jack's defense was, once again, you are scapegoating me because I just like to party. I will say this much. I just like to party? Basically, I'm I'm a good time kind of guy. That didn't work for me in college. No. It's not going to work for killing 11 hookers. No, it, no. it's not. I'm sorry. No. So the just, whole time, he is just eating up all the press, a lot like Bundy did for his trial. Oh, yep. And he's smiling at the camera and thinking he's going to get off. And uh, and you could tell that he thought he was this good-looking guy, and he honestly just looks like a worm with eyebrows. Yes. He looks like, like a nice creepy uncle. He does. Yeah. And covered in prison tattoos, which is why everyone was shocked when he got out of jail that he started wearing designer suits. Because in every photo shoot he took in prison, he was showing off his prison tattoos. Oh, yeah. And dude was inked up. Like, you can't say prison tattoos are good, but dude was inked up in decent, decent designs. I mean, the idea was there. The execution was poor. (laughs) (laughs) It's the tattoo you get in, like, a back room in some guy named Philip's house. With like toilet ink, yeah. We're um, gonna take this ballpoint pen and this dirty heroin needle, and we're gonna try to make this work. There's yep. something about his hair that bothers me. Unterweger, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. Cause his head looks like the tip of a penis. It kind of. Uh, does. <laughs> it kind of does. Now that you pointed out, he looks. <laughs> yeah. That is... stereotypical dickhead. Yeah. There it is. There you go. There it is. And this is when everybody listening will now Google the image of Jack Unterweger. Well, guess what's going on over here on this computer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, he's a dickhead. He's even got the nice little helmet top with it. I mean, him in this white suit with the red flower is something else, man. Yeah, he looks like the worst spy that ever had. Yeah. The the off brand James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. He looks Double like a o. background actor from like Saturday Night Fever. Or something. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. like that's what it is. <laughs> yep. That you one. hit the nail on the head. <laughs> that, I think you broke Matt. <laughs> he's the guy who's doing the finger dance wrong. Right. Right, he's and he old... thinks he's a legitimate actor, and he just yeah. got all of his glossies done. He and just he never got, got hired again. Yeah, never. He's Tommy was out. <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> I think this guy seems to have a better. I'm sorry, Tommy, but 
this guy seems to have a better grasp on reality than Tony and the Rizzo. English language. Yeah. And the English language. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> when a serial murderer has a better grasp on reality <sighs> than you do. When you can honestly I mean, say that's that saying serial something. murderer butchers mm-hmm. the English language less than the mm-hmm. former governor of California. Well, true. Well, true. well he ran for the governor of a state he can't pronounce. California. Yeah, but he won. He did, and he wasn't terrible. Like, no, I, I like Arnold. Still Jesse the Body Ventura ran oh. for like Montana and won too. No, Minnesota, yeah, Minnesota, and he did win, but I think it was just for one term. And now he's a conspiracy theorist. Oh, which is everybody's boy. life Uncle. goal. Oh, okay, uh, <laughs> Uncle, they're like life goal. Him and Ted Nugent, huh? Oh, yeah. dude, my, my goal is to go old and awesome like Dan Aykroyd and just yell about yeah. aliens and make vodka. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. That'd be I don't awesome. know why, but like, what he, whatever fucking Dan Aykroyd says, I believe, and I don't even believe in that shit. So, like, last podcast did an interview with Dan Aykroyd. It was no awesome. Way. I haven't, I haven't had to listen to it. It's so good. Wow. And, and I'm like, if you talk to me, I would cream my pants twice. Oh my God. Three, yes. I would need three pairs of pants. Yes. I'm it, sure okay. it took them at least an hour of bullshitting for them to actually get through a sentence. I would, I, I would want to look classy, but wear basketball shorts just so I could rip them off and have the clean shorts underneath. <laughs> Make sure they're tearaways. <laughs> you might not notice. My best friend casually mentioned the other day that she knows Bill Murray. I'm like, <gasps> and she like visited him with him when he was in town. I'm like, bitch, why didn't you invite me? Where, we invited him to our wedding. Oh. I'm going mm-hmm. to offer Nicolas Cage two thousand dollars to just show up. Yes, we just we invited Bill Murray. We told him he could bring somebody. We're like, just come and eat come. Cool. And he didn't come. No, he didn't Bill come. Murray, man. You know, do you know it would be to he have was... a random celebrity like Bill Murray That'd or Dan so cool. Dan Aykroyd, Nicholas Cage, just show up just to fuck with everybody's family? Yes. Like, well, but the how... thing is, is Bill Murray does do stuff like that. He does. He'll just That's show up. Saying. Like if he's in town, he'll just show yeah. up. Like he I heard a story about he showed up at somebody's house while they like had a party mm-hmm. and. He helped do the dishes. But do you know how he, interesting, yeah. like, all of a sudden at your wedding, Bill Murray's just serving the meatballs? No, I so figured cool. he'd start DJing. DJ Peter Bankman? Yes. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Would, oh, DJ Slimer! So cool. Bill Murray, if you're listening, we will renew our vows if you will be the DJ. Yeah, please. Nicholas Cage, if you're listening, there is $2,000 on the table. Just show up. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. I don't have money to pay you, but it'll be a good time. Neither do I. I will take a loan out for that. We've got good liquor. <laughs> there. That's the incentive. And, so, and weed. So here, yeah. well, thank I'll you for that. listening to our random rant on Bill Murray yeah. and Nicolas Cage. We'll be here so all Jack Wunderbeger <laughs> ended up getting convicted. Okay. Because they would okay. literally bring the bras from every murder and just be like, look at this knot. Look at this knot. Here's another knot that looks similar. Hey, you remember his first victim? Boom, same knot. Out of the 11 potential victims, he only got convicted of nine. What? Wow. Because there was not sufficient evidence to convict him of the other two. Okay. Same thing that happened in San Diego. There was not sufficient evidence and it was not due to the fact that he didn't leave evidence behind. It's how dis- decayed the bodies were. Mm, gotcha. I saw I saw a couple crime scene videos, and it was just like spinal columns. Uh, uh, yeah. Shout out to Sarah's babysitter. Sarah's yes. daughter's babysitter, in fact. Yes, yes, because I don't have a babysitter. <laughs> my it's my daughter's babysitter. Like we're like paying for you to be babysitter because <laughs> you need it. Right, because you know it. what? If not, I'm gonna start shouting motherfucker at the people yes. I work with and Sam- Samuel Jackson's L. Jackson's voice. voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the day after Unterweger gets arrested and convicted. The day after he gets convicted. It didn't happen one day. This isn't the Chikatilo case in Russia. Jesus Christ. That's he finally one. made true, and we could at least say he was honest about one thing. 
that if he got convicted of life in prison again, he would kill himself. Mm-hmm. And the morning after he got convicted, they found him post-suicide, hanging from a coat hanger in a cell with the drawstring of his own pants, and Dominique said this in part one, with the same knots that he killed uh, every hooker with. Same damn knots. So uh, how fuck you was that? That was a huge fuck you. That was a huge fuck you. And like, and like I said earlier, there was a note found that the Austrian police have not released. Ah, uh, I want to know what it says. I do too. Ha, ha, hey, why ha. did they not put him on suicide watch? Right. Or did he pay the guy that they put on suicide watch? So one of the biggest takeaways from the Unterweger case is that it made the Austrian government reform their idea of rehabilitation. Oh, yeah, they would have to. Literally, this guy spit in their face the whole time. Oh, for sure. And he went on... We can call it a spree killing. I, I would call it a spree killing. I wouldn't, but I would, I would call it berserker modes. But it's something that really makes you wonder. And we brought it up in the first episode. Was his literary career, this case not only affected an entire country, but affected half the world and made an entire country rethink how they do prison reform. Right around that time is when they passed all of the uh, prison reform in the ni- in the early 90s here. But I don't think it was just him. You could argue he was the one in Austria that caused them to reevaluate their prison system. But here in America, I think He might have been a factor, but I don't think he was the tipping point. I agree. I think it was a factor. And if there was no murders done on American soil. Yeah, he would be a footnote somewhere. Yes. And the sheer fact that as Americans, we're wrapped up in the gore and the body count. We look at Dahmer and his big blue barrel, Gacy and his crawl space, and Bundy and his rampage. The difference between Unterweger and those three is Unterweger didn't experiment. He had his MO and that was it. Whereas those other three, there was clear escalation and clear upping the ante. Look at Dahmer. It was very clear escalation. And it's not like he just started making zombies. That wasn't what he did with the first one. That was later on. If Dahmer actually succeeded and that was the start of the zombie apocalypse, just a bunch of gay sex zombies going around. I love that. We're writing a movie. I love that so much. Also, the producer credit on that one. Yeah. See how it pans out. See if it gets a theatrical release or goes straight to DVD. I love it. I love everything about that idea. It's great. great. And Dahmer would be the the zombie king. Dahmer just sitting on a throne that's one peg. Everything about it's great. Love it. Petting a zombie like it's Dr. Evil's cat. Can of Schlitz in his hand. There's bones in the chocolate. We got this. I don't think we can say that. It might be trademarked. We'll we'll talk to them and we'll make it happen. It'll be great. Oh, yeah. yeah, We'll get them all involved in it. They can be zombies. Yeah, it's fine. Do you know how much Henry would probably act up that role? But why I brought this case up, we were talking about it earlier, is (gasps) you... The movie could be called Dahmer's Angels. There's another t-shirt idea. It only comes in women's sizes. And no, the wings are bones. We make underwear with Dahmer's Angels on the butt. This is how we make our millions. Becoming <laughs> SPs and Dahmer's out. Angels tidy wings. <laughs> and just right over the cock is his face. No, no, no. That would be, no. yeah, that could be a problem. It's too much. That could be a the line, bar. Yeah, That's we where we the draw line. the line after the, we're we're the line. movie idea. Dahmer's yes. face over the crotch is <laughs> yes. the line. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have officially reached the line. Yes. <laughs> the yep. bar has been lowered. 
We don't want Dahlia DiPolito on our shirt that says don't eat cat shit. And we definitely don't want Dahmer's face on the crotch of someone's underwear. I'm just thinking of the people who have to fuck this guy looking at Dahmer's face and being like, ugh. It's a bonus. I need to reassess my the... life choices. Yeah. Like... <laughs> and there's our five minute laugh track in every episode. <laughs> So the one thing that's interesting about this case with America's love for true crime is why isn't this more widely known? Yeah. In studying sociology and psychology like me and you did and serial killers, it only came up because I found it in a song. You look at all the true crime podcasts out there where they're covering Dean Coral, Bob Bordella, all of them. Why hasn't this one come up? I could have done months of research and went down different holes and oh, that's crazy. not the right thing to say after the Dahmer underwear conversation. No. I saw both of your faces. But... I was like, really? You're going to go with that term? <laughs> Wrong metaphor. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> we'll move there. Strategy cotton. In your guys' opinion, why isn't this case more widely known? Is it because most of the victims took place overseas? Or is it because it is just such a dark footnote on prison reform, criminal justice, and the, I don't want to say ignorance because that's the wrong word because I have the utmost respect for police officers, but the kind of turning the blind eye. And then it makes you think, what minor celebrities do we have here that might have that same dark it also happened right between Roddy King and OJ Simpson too right so I and right that during Dahmer with it right and I think part of it is because the trial was never here yeah because the trial wasn't done in the US come on we're Americans why do we give a shit what goes on somewhere else that's seriously but our minds that half the time. Right, but the trial wasn't here. Hmm. We were wrapped up in Rodney King. We were wrapped up in OJ Simpson. We were wrapped up in Jeffrey Dahmer. Dude, Jeffrey fucking Dahmer got caught right around the same time. Nobody else knows what happened because Jeffrey Dahmer got caught. Plus, Desert Storm. It makes yeah. you think if this guy did it in 1998 or... If he did it at another time, possibly, but I honestly think that if his trial happened in L.A., probably more Americans would be talking about him. Because I'm sure if we spoke German, we could listen to a German podcast about him. Yes. Or an Austrian podcast about him. I did find it interesting that I did talk to my friend from work who's Austrian. Now, admittedly, at this time, he was super busy working for all of the top chefs of the time, but he was super unaware of uh, Unterweger. So when I told him about it, he was like, shut up, really? This was a thing? And so he was going to call his mom. <laughs> and I haven't seen him since I last talked to him know. about it. We wonder yeah, I most certainly happen. will. I most certainly will. And I told him he needs to listen to us. And then he's like, hey, can my daughter listen to you guys? Um, I was like, no. Uh, mm, she's a little young. No, oh, kitty. That is a happy cat she right there. Some air time. Sorry. She's so cute. But it, so, it, it, if it, we it, want it, to use this as footage for the Dr. Evil cat stroke. Is it bad that I would just see like a zombie head with like little hands and feet hanging out of the neck and that's what he's petting <laughs> no like the little hands like oh, like thing yep so it's like this and that's how you walk <laughs> i love that. Dahmer's personal jack off and is just Oh, oh, the worst best movie. We will outdo leeches. We will outdo the room. Zombie strippers. Still on Amazon Prime. Great movie. A great movie. Um, the guy that plays Robert England. Yes, oh, and my favorite yeah. line, and all I want to do oh, all the time, anytime I see someone spraying Lysol, especially right now, is go. It's a walking herpy. And spray <laughs> the girl with Lysol. That's what COVID is. We are all walking herpes because of COVID. Oh my gosh, I've gone through so much Lysol in my office. Me, yeah, in my home I have. But oh. yeah, it, it's it's just interesting to me that every time I look up something about this case, 
I find four more things and four more contradictions. It, it, it's weird to think that a guy who I think we can say is our editorial take on this, that his writing career was a way to get out of prison. He played the long game. He only did. It shut down in the short game. That's true. Uh, yeah. That could be and To me, that's very strange. Like, was he so excited to get out of jail? His first thought was, I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to be famous. Let's kill some hookers. And <laughs> he was like, sweet, I'm getting out. I'm going to go kill some hookers. Yes. You wouldn't think that's your first thought getting out of I'm jail. I'm sure that was his first thought. And if it wasn't his first thought, it was, I'm going to get laid and then kill some hookers. Yeah, because he was tired of being the bottom in the showers. Right. Uh, are we sure he was the bottom? Because oh, I guarantee. Also, <laughs> yes. Both literal and in his personality. Dumb question. Of course he was the bottom. And that's why I like that we did this case over, mm-hmm. and we did Dahlia, and some of the cases we've talked about are the little known ones because there are the big headliners Mm -hmm. but it when I look back at at some of these and going through the list and some of the things we've talked about yeah there are some big media ones I brought up because I showed my buddy the manifesto episode from last podcast with Elliot Rogers and Mm, I thought he was gonna drop a fence post on his head because he was laughing so hard But we bring up the incel murders and things like that. These are are chronic problems in our time. These are chronic, chronic problems. And especially when we look at the fallout from serial killers to shoot them up spree killers is the biggest effect that we have right now. We have more school shootings than ever before. So much true crime nowadays gets put to the wayside because of the lack of media presence and i thought you were gonna say the old-fashioned no no i'm so glad those monsters are well they either evolved or died off well yeah that's true we don't know which me and you talked about that that's a Dahmer's angels is our b-raid film and then we also have the movie idea that me and you talked about It, it was something we touched on and we can actually rope it into this case there is a distinct drop off in serial murder in america mm-hmm. Some people could tie that to the effect of the over-monitoring we have. There's cameras on every corner, you know. We can track internet history now. Everyone's DNA is in the system. The reptilians are watching us at all times. But who's to say with how much we know about the web and how much people can hack into stuff? You brought up the smiley face murders. And whether that's actual murders or just a conspiracy theory, because there are differentiating ideas of that. Who's to say there is not some serial killer out there who can actually blank the tapes or change the tapes that that's our box office smash movie right there. Mm-hmm. And we can rope the incels into that. We can get everything together, <laughs> throw a little Scientology. Yep. Throw it can all. we get QAnon in there too? And rope oh, all those crazy people in. Yeah, yeah. A, a Jonestown survivor. Um... <laughs> Dahlia DiPolito's ex-boyfriend. I don't know. It is interesting that it seems like things are more spree killing based now opposed to the long game with the serial killers. But I do think there are still, for lack of a better term, traditional serial killers still around. It's just not getting covered as such because the connections haven't been made yet. I can see that. I can see that. I mean... Look at Samuel Little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He went Putting his under the radar for so long because, number one, he traveled as much as he did, but it, it took a long time to pin it down because his MO looked like just people had heart attacks. Yeah. So it didn't look like a murder necessarily, or if it did, it didn't have something like a knotted bra to tie it together. Literally. (laughs) Yeah. That's one of the things that, because of the oversaturation of true crime. Well, yeah. That people now have to change their MOs to get basically bad term for this. But, you know, we have been talking about sex workers and all that kind of things to basically get their rocks off. Yeah. That they have to change up their MOs and you have to 
adapt to the times. Exactly. Who's to say some of these unsolved murders where one's a gunshot, one's a stabbing, one's a strangulation is not the same person just adapting to the times. And right. like Unterweger, who played the long game originally to get out of jail, only to prematurely ejaculate himself back into suicide. Right. Uh, That's actually the perfect term, too. And I broke Sarah right there. Uh, <laughs> I have no response to that. Moving on. But maybe he planned that. Maybe he was like, on the other hand, like when he was in jail, he was like, I'm going to get out. I'm going to do one last hurrah. I'm just going to go ape shit. And I'm yeah. out. Yeah. But I don't think anybody trying to get out of jail, especially when he was talking about, if I get sentenced again, I'm True. killing myself. True. And he mm-hmm. made that perfectly well known to people that if I go to jail and it talks about it in Poet of Death, yep. that he was going to commit suicide. He was like, yeah, this might happen again. And and to me, that even seems like a premeditative statement. Yeah. Like, you know, so could you say Unterweger in premeditation was his own final victim? Maybe. I like that. That's, And yeah. there is a lot of poetic justice I guess that he used the same knot yep I mean he was a writer that is something that a writer would do to write something like that if he was writing the story of his life what tying up with sons yes Yes. so he what you're saying is he tied off a better ending than Stephen King oh (laughs) maybe were you in my creative writing class in high school? Because I think my teacher would have loved that joke. <laughs> Even he got up there day it. one. He got up there day one. He goes, Stephen King's a hack. And I was like, wow. Bold move. Sir. We are there. Yeah. yeah. Who, who's to he say that? He also said Ernest Hemingway was a hack, too. But And because he committed suicide so quickly after yeah. his conviction, to use a bad joke, we have a lot of loose ends that he did not have. As much as we're saying it was premeditated, a lot of guys do that. They yeah. do. A lot of people do that, which is exactly why they, we could do a whole episode on this too. But Epstein. Yes. Conspiracy theories aside, he killed himself. I'm surprised. What's her face? Just Lane? Yeah. His girlfriend? I'm surprised she's still alive, to be honest. Yeah. But anybody that's looking down the trigger of a gun like that, figuratively or literally, you know, they're going to look for a better exit strategy. He's going to do it on his terms. Yeah. You look at somebody who's also died in prison, who had fame, who had all that kind of stuff. Someone like Dahmer. Well, but see, the thing about Dahmer is you could argue that it was suicide by prisoner. Mm-hmm. I still, and I will go with a lot of true crime podcasts here. I still kind of feel a little bit of sympathy towards Dahmer because yeah. once he got on the right meds, he, he realized how fucked up he That's was. Right, yeah. which is why I think it was suicide by prisoner. Yeah. You think he put himself in that situation? Yep. Because the guard walked away. I think he did it. I think it was a very calculated move on his part. Interesting. I wonder. That's interesting. Yeah. I really do. That is very interesting. That's basically the wrap-up of the Vienna Strangler, Jack Unterweger, someone who's very underknown for a short crime spree that is pretty fascinating. Yeah. I wanted to see the initial reactions. The whole case is interesting, but the ending of it with, I'm going to L.A., I'm going to write, I'm going to kill four hookers, and all while I'm doing this, hey, let's go on ride-alongs, and I'm going to pump the police for information. And we can't even critique the LAPD in this because all they knew him as was this is this foreign writer who's asking beat cops for information about crimes that are going on, and they think they're going to get published. Sign up to do that. I could do that. Sarah could do that. We could be like, I'm a writer. I want to sign up for ride-alongs. They'd be Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And especially someone who's as published, especially coming over with the credentials. Right. He at least had credentials. I'm just some asshole that's like, hey, let me do a ride along, guys. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) My derpy voice. 
voice I mean, my derpy voice. Well, we can, we can <laughs> That's the that. voice I would use. We can do that nowadays. <laughs> we have credentials. We have a podcast on Spotify. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I'm not That's just some asshole. I, I'm I'm a yeah. podcast. We have the Patreon still in the works. We'll definitely let you guys know when that starts so I can get my Tommy Wiseau underwear. Uh, <laughs> like, rate, and review us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Constructive criticism is great. It makes us better. But number two, I like to hear that I'm doing good. I want to hear the well actually's. Wait, what? Well actually's. Yeah. Oh, when we're wrong and people are I like, have... well, actually. Of well, actually. Yeah. But well, actually, they've been pretty accurate. Like, they, mm. they've been nice and constructive. People who oh, good. we appreciate that. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank constructive you. is good. Follow us on social media. Yep. We have a Facebook page. Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm... At one day I'll get around to making an Instagram. Yeah, at one day. One thing at a time. And then we have a Discord server. And Yes. Just Patreon. We're getting to the Patreon. And oh, please let us know on the Facebook page if there's any cases you want us to cover yeah. or anything specifically. We'd love yeah. to hear the feedback because yeah. we might have our ideas and different things we've looked up. There might be something you want to hear us talk about in our mm. fun, chaotic ADD way. <laughs> and then we go off the rails. <laughs> we start talking about movie ideas. Yeah. yeah. Dahmer's the king of the rails on this crazy train. Dahmer's angels. <laughs> The underwear I like idea. I like that idea. Except for the face, man. That's good. Yeah, not the That's face. I can't. Much. I can't. I mean, it could be a preventative measure for like a bad date or something. Yes. <laughs> That's like... not a bad idea. And then. You oh, so we're going to add to the incel like... murder count forever whoever buys that underwear because they can't get laid? Maybe. That's dumber <laughs> face on their crotch. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's like. I've seen too much. I'm I've seen too all. much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Peace out, guys. I'm shuffling off. Peace the out, Girl Scout. I'm done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Peace out, Girl Scout. I'm out. <laughs> all right, everybody. Keep asking questions. Make your own reality. And let the facts be your answers.